The majority of grandparents bringing up their grandchildren in the UK face financial hardship. Please, she said, just five pounds. Because I've seen this lovely top. You, it's wicked, she said. When you see it, you're going to love it. And I'm going, you're sure? I had to change my job um, in order to care for them, which meant a drop in wages. Um, and just the burden of, of bringing up two very young children. Clothes cost such a lot of money, and then, you know, when they go to school, they always need things. Like school uniforms, school meals, bus pass. So, what little bit, bit of money you might have has to then not go on yourself, as you thought it probably would do at this age. You've got to care for your grandchild with that money. When we said we couldn't afford to keep them, that there's no way we could afford to have these children because we, we need to work full time, that's the way it is. We'd taken on a massive mortgage before the children came because we thought, well, from now on, we're at an age where our careers are going to get better and we're looking at promotion and finances are going to increase. Certainly, if I didn't have so many financial problems, um, life would be a lot easier. I, mean, I don't mind working, but it's just that you want to be able to work and do some other things as well, rather than sort of work full time until you're 90 or something. I, mean, mm. I don't really particularly want to do that. I definitely feel that um, I and others, I'm sure, we're just treated like parents who are continuing to be parents. But yet still, if you seem to need anything and it comes anything to do with finance, do you know what I mean? It's like a hot potato. We were described as being money grabbers, as being only in this for the money. We wanted to look after them for the money, which was totally ridiculous because we'd been financially supporting these children since the day they were born, trying to help mum out, paying off rent arrears, buying them clothes, buying food. If I had two children fostered, I'd have £400 a week. But I'd also have at my any time, night or day, round that clock, I could phone my social worker. Once, once we were accepted as, as kinship carers, then a lot of support flowed in. And, and uh, so far, uh, to date, um, I think it's, I have to say, it's, it's, it's been quite good, actually, in fact. There needs to be an awareness that this is the situation, this is what is happening. Um, and all of these children are living in families that are under so much pressure that you've taken the children to make things better, but sooner or later that is going to crack if people aren't financially supported. <laughs> How can you profit by your child's dying, you know? How can you profit by having to give up your life to look after your grandchildren, you know, what money can really balance the scale and balance the equation. Love cannot be bought. Caring cannot be bought. Because um, even with us, even though, you know, we, we get the full grant of him, we ourselves don't get paid anything. So, I mean, they're saving a huge amount of money that way, you know, because if we were actually professional carers, there would be a grant for him and there would be a sort of salary for us, but there isn't. It was more about um, value and us as carers, which we didn't we didn't we don't ever feel throughout the process that we've been valued as carers